Hey guys, welcome to part two of our discussion on time series forecasting. And in the last video, we laid the groundwork about uh, time series uh, by just going through the definitions. And in this video, let's use Python to explore a data set. And the tools I'm gonna go through are very useful no matter what type of data set you're looking at typically. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm talking about time series. So let's jump into our Python IDE. And for those of you who haven't watched any of my previous videos, I definitely recommend watching videos about getting started with Python so you know exactly what tools I'm using. So I'll be using Spider IDE. So let me go ahead and jump and show you. This is the Spider IDE and I'm working with Python 3.5 because I have GPU installed here, but I also have another uh, environment here uh, with Python 3.7. So the tools I'm showing you, it shouldn't matter. They work in 3.5 or 3.7, okay? So uh, first of all, we'll be working with a airline passenger data set because we all can relate to this. And uh, this is basically a month by month number of passengers. I think this is from 1950s. We'll have a quick look at it in a minute. Um, as you can see, it's from 49 to December 1960. So for about uh, 12 years, okay? Total 144 observations and you can download this data set. Now, uh, in addition to that, I'll also use a couple of uh, couple of uh, modules. The one I should mention is called Stats Models, S-T-A-T-S-M-O-D-E-L-S. Uh, otherwise, everything else I use are very standard. You don't have to install them. So to install the stats models, go ahead and type uh, pip install, yeah, pip install stats models, and then it should it should install, uh, you know, in this environment for you. Okay. So other than that, everything else you should definitely have if you have. Uh, uh, no matter what type of uh, Python IDE you use. Okay, so let's first start by importing the right uh, libraries. I like to plot, uh, you know, especially if I'm doing some special plots, I like to use Seaborn. Again, please watch my video on this topic if you like the type of, uh, you know, plots that you will see in a minute. Otherwise, matplotlib is fine and pandas for data handling, numpy for, I, I'm not even sure if I'm using numpy here, but that's something I always import. Uh, because I try to play with numbers, uh, you know, uh, all the time. And uh, for now, I'm going to put my, uh, you know, style of uh, plotting to dark background because, frankly, I'm not a big fan of dark background, but for my title video, I needed something in the black background, so I just, I just did it. So that's obviously optional. So go ahead and run these lines, which should be fine. Now my data is located in a folder called data and uh, it's the file name is airpassengers.csv. So let's go ahead and assign that to a data frame. And uh, uh, I, I provided a name DF. It can be anything that you think uh, would reflect the data that you're trying to read. Okay, so if I double click up here and open this, you can see that, okay, I have month and passengers. And the month is, uh, in the format 1949-01-02 all the way to 12 and then it switches to 1950-01-02 and then so on and passengers obviously is the number of passengers in thousands okay so what do we do first of all look at the data types when you do df.d types it tells you what type of data type so the month here is an object which means it's a text and the passengers is integer which is fine uh, the month text uh, th this means, I mean, you can ignore that column if you want, which means then you're just looking at your data as just a series, but oftentimes it helps to plot your data against a specific date, right? So that's why I recommend changing this month from object to date time format. In Pandas, you can do that by just uh, doing PD to date time, okay? So pandas dot to date time method. And what are you applying that to? You are applying that to the column that's titled month. So if I open this again, this column is titled month. So we are applying that to this column. And I'm overwriting that column, so I'm not creating a new column, okay? So because I'm saying my df month is equal to this, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure some of you or most of you are thinking this is very basic, but for newcomers, this definitely helps. So if I go back here, you see how it changed my month from 1949 to 0101 all zero. So it adds a date and also my, uh, hour, uh, minutes and seconds. 
Okay, uh, which doesn't hurt in this case. So we don't have to do much of anything, but all we need to know is, okay, if you go ahead and type D types, you should see that now it's actually a date time uh, format. So this is, again, these are typical steps I usually do when I work with a date time based uh, time series, or you know, even in milliseconds, you can change that to date time and then uh, convert that into just milliseconds. Okay, so now my month is a separate uh, column. Typically, it helps if you make your index equal to your month, or sorry, your date. I should have changed the title here from month to date, but it doesn't matter. So what we are going to do right now is or set the index to month. So you'll see exactly what happens when we do that. You see now my first column with index 0, 1, 2, 3, which was absolutely useless, that's replaced by our month right here. Okay, so again, please watch my tutorials on pandas if you want to know more about this data frame, how to handle it. I'm just showing you the typical things that I recommend that I use so you get familiar with uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, so once you go through this exercise in the next two, three uh, videos, we all will have certain baseline in terms of how we are handling this data. Okay, just out of curiosity, let's go ahead and plot the passengers and to see how the passengers look like. So that's that's good. So as you can see, not, not many people travel in 1950s, more people 52, 54, 56. So in general, the trend is going up, meaning the trend of people flying is going up. Now I'm pretty sure it's even higher. And also, you'll see that in addition to this general trend of going up, there is also something like a seasonality. It's going up and coming down, going up and coming down. Probably in summer, a lot of people are traveling and then later on they're not traveling, right? So that's probably that seasonality uh, is uh, uh, reflecting. Now, we talked about stationarity in our previous tutorial, which means for most approaches, whether it is autoregression or ARIMA or some of these, it assumes the data to be stationary. Now, what does stationary mean? We already talked about it. The, uh, the mean and the variance are not changing as a function of time in the time series. So we can easily predict. Now, is this data set stationary? I mean, as you can see, this is not stationary. It's actually going up and there is seasonality there. Uh, there is a, a famous, again, in statistics, they use uh, something called Dickey-Fuller test. Again, this is not a tutorial about uh, statistics, but if you are interested, go ahead and Google search and learn more about this. This is very similar to student t-test if you have used t-test. Well, not similar. In terms of interpretation, this is similar. Meaning, uh, you start with null hypothesis, okay? And then if the p-value or the probability is uh, above 5%, then you say, okay, the data is probably not likely stationary. If it's below 5%, you can say that, okay, it is likely stationary. So that's that's a quick summary. I know I'm not doing it justice uh, to this Dickey-Fuller test, but this is what it does. Now, uh, you don't need to code much to do this test. All you got to do is from stats, models.tsa.stat tools, okay? TSA stands for time series analysis and statistical tools, get add uh, uh, fuller, AD fuller. And then it uh, when you run that on your data set, it actually gives you one, two, three, four, five, six values as outputs. All I care about is the second one, which is the probability value, and I'm printing it out here. Okay, that's all I'm trying to do here. And let's go ahead and run these. And as you will see, the p-value is almost one. That means it's, it's very confident that this is not a stationary data set. Obviously, we know that. Okay, so this is, uh, and why do we do this type of test against stationary? So you can actually pick the right type of uh, uh, approach, like ARIMA or what approach. Now, there is another thing that we'll do in the next tutorial, which is auto ARIMA. It actually tells us we don't even need to do this test. Hey, given your data, this is the best model and these are the best parameters. So let's save that for next tutorial, but let's go ahead and explore this a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new column in my data frame called year, because now I, let's just look at how the trends are changing or how the numbers are changing on a yearly basis. We know it's going up. And is there a trend on a monthly basis, which means we need to divide the data into year, very easy in pandas. So create a new column called year. And uh, for year in this index, just go ahead and uh, again, run this line, you'll see 
when I open this data frame, you'll see that, okay, my year here is 1949. All I'm doing is from this, I'm just extracting from the index, I'm just extracting what the year is, okay? And then adding it in a new column, okay? Why? Because it makes it easy for us to plot, that's all. I'll do exactly the same thing for month. I'm just going to strip the month part from the index and add it to a column called month in the data frame. So go ahead and look at it. Now we go from January to December, again January to December and so on. So this helps us have a quick look at are there any trends with respect to month? Are there any trends with respect to year? That's all we are trying to do. Again, we are exploring the data. We are not forecasting yet. So uh, box plot is a great way of looking at it. So let's go ahead and plot year against the passenger. So if you can look uh, down here, now you can actually see uh, year by year, it's actually going up, right? We saw that as part of our trend. The number of passengers are going up year by year. And uh, one reason I like Seaborn plotting, SNS, you know, is a short form of Seaborn that I'm, I defined earlier, uh, is it kind of plots these, uh, these, these uh, you know, confidence intervals. So it makes it a bit easy for us to quickly get a glance at uh, the mean and the confidence interval. So that's one of the advantages of uh, Seaborn compared to regular pi plots. Let's now look at the month versus passengers. As you can see, overall, there seems to be a higher trend in July and August compared to rest of the months. And maybe in December, there is a higher trend because of holidays, but typically the, the uh, travel is higher in July. So there is some seasonality, as you can see. You see how the, if you just follow these mean lines, it's, it's uh, just slowly going up and then coming back down. Okay, that's exactly the seasonality we saw here. Yeah, it's going up, coming down, going up, coming down each year. So the, again, these are the types of studies you can actually do. I'm pretty sure if you get your hands on to the latest data, this is from 1950s, but I'm pretty sure a lot more people are traveling in 2020s compared to 1950s. So uh, uh, get, get your hands on the latest data set and then just do some sort of uh, analysis like this or work with stock data. Okay. Now, we talked about trend and seasonality. There is an easy way to separate these. You can do your own uh, coding, a bunch of lines, you know, if you know how to do this mean, you know, or running average, but you don't need to do any of that. In stats models, again, as part of our time series analysis, seasonal, import the seasonal decompose method and apply that to the column that we want to apply it to, which is our passengers. And the model can be additive or multiplicative. And additive is basically you have a base level. On top of that, you're adding the trend and then seasonality and then your uh, error. Um, multiplicative, as the name suggests, it's just a multiplication instead of addition. So uh, go ahead and check both approaches. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when I run this, it actually uh, decomposed it. Yeah. And the decomposed here is, uh, it actually contains three things, right? I mean, it contains trend, seasonal, and residual information. The way to extract individual data frames out of this is just do decompose.trend. It gives you a new, so let's go ahead and run this, okay? And you'll see there are three new values here. So uh, trend is a series. If I open it again, you see one, two, three, four, five, six. There is like not much, uh, not many numbers. I mean, these are no numbers there. And then it started to show the trend again. See how trend is calculated. And this definitely makes sense because it's taking this five values and then moving in a five value window. So there is not much to show in the first five data points here. Anyway, so this is this is the uh, trend and there is seasonal, but just by looking at the numbers doesn't make any sense to us. So let's go ahead and plot it. Uh, for this, I'm using regular pi plot and then arranging them into uh, two by two grid. So now you can actually see that, uh, sorry, not two by two. You see four, one, one, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, four. That means just one, two, three, four, one below the other. So here is the raw original data and then the trend that it extracted. Obviously, you can clearly see how the trend, uh, you know, is going up from 1950s to 60s. And then this is uh, the seasonal, which means, uh, I mean, you can clearly see that this is basically your original minus the trend with some, some other math because this is highly seasonal, as you can see. 
okay and then comes your residuals which is obviously whatever is remaining so uh, this is this is a great way now if you really all you care about is just uh, getting your seasonal information you just need to run this decomposed and then you already have your seasonal information and you can take this seasonal and pick the right uh, approach arima or whatever it is okay so that's uh, uh, that's that and finally before ending this video i'd like to talk about autocorrelation so time series is all about autocorrelation right so uh, as i mentioned in the previous tutorial your values are not correlated with your x axis well x axis is there to plot it as a function of time but the values itself are correlated with uh, uh, itself meaning Today's value is correlated with yesterday and then the day before and then the day before and so on. So the values, because it's time series, it's supposed to be correlated with itself. That's called autocorrelation. OK, uh, with its, when I say with itself, with a specific lag, right? OK, how am I correlated with five days ago and then five days ago and then five days ago? If there is a weekly activity, how is that correlated with last week and the week before and so on? So to do that, uh, there are two ways to do. First of all, you can actually extract this uh, AC autocorrelation uh, from stats models tsa.stat tools and uh, there you can provide a lag for example i am providing a lags number of lags as 144 so it shows everything for 144 lags in fact let's go ahead and do that so you can see exactly what i'm talking about so here it is so on x axis you have lags on y axis you have autocorrelation okay so uh, autocorrelation above zero means positive correlation below zero is negative correlation and how much of that is correlated of course that's the magnitude right so this is up to 144 I personally like the built-in autocorrelation plot from pandas library so within pandas dot plotting there is something called autocorrelation underscore plot and you'll see why I like this better because it actually provides us the 95% and 99% confidence interval. So I can clearly say anything above this, I'm highly confident that any lags below 40, you see, it's all positively correlated and it's above 99% confidence level. So any lag before 40 days in this data set, or I think in this case it's monthly, so be below 40 months, it's a strong positive correlation. OK, so that's very useful information for you to, uh, you know, apply it in your forecasting. So, again, there is a lot more you can do, but hopefully I provided enough uh, ground level information, enough basement, you know, that you can build on top of it. So, again, uh, most of my viewers are scientists, I should say, or researchers who are trying to learn image processing and data analysis. That's why I'm not going too deep into any of uh, these uh, uh, these type of topics. But if you're really interested, there's wealth of information on YouTube or elsewhere. So please go ahead and dig it. But please stay tuned to this channel because in the next video, we are going to do some forecasting using ARIMA. In the next one, neural networks. And the one after that, LSTMs and the one after that build on our LSTM knowledge. So please stay tuned and I hope you like this video. Please go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I know you'll love it. Thank you.